This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Dice.com. There isn't any internet access out here, um, or at least in the range of the sponsor cabins at Tor Camp, and I've resorted to reading these, um, I guess they're like paper blogs, so like, this is just, it's just like an ordinary blog post, except you can't like, you can't pinch and zoom or anything, and if you want to comment, like you have to, like, mail something, it takes a while, so... Pretty linear too. There's no search function or hashtags, but you know it, it works. You just you keep flipping. Um, you know, ad block is a little bit more difficult, but uh, yeah. I will say though, layout is beautiful. I love layout. So here's a fantastic observation about hacking. These guys over here, this this whole unit here houses uh, 24 or 25 of these uh, one watt lasers, and they projected it up into the sky, and it was absolutely gorgeous. And the whole thing required approval from the FAA to do. And meanwhile, over here, the Shady Tail guys have an entire cell network built. And they had to get approval from the FCC, and it's like, what just happened here? When did hacking, you know, like, I thought we were just, you know, having fun with the FBI. Now we're having fun with all sorts of governmental agencies. That is so cool. So what are you breaking down right now? I am breaking down Shady Tell's uh, GSM telephone network. We set up a, a cell phone network for this camp. Um, it took about 12 hours to set up once we pulled, pulled in with the car. Um, and it was running for four days. Yeah? Yeah. So what does it take to put together uh, a telephone network? It takes a lot of equipment as it turns out. We've got some fun stuff here. Um, one sec. So, one thing we've got is a, is a computer in a bin, because um, it's a bin. And then on top of that is a, a an E1 T1 switch. That is a, a device that takes in a bunch of uh, a bunch of lines. It's got an Ethernet switch. It's got a T1 switch. It has uh, some serial ports, and it's basically it's it's sort of like a Linksys router for a cell phone site. So it does the multiplexing and everything. Yeah, yeah. So I've got one card inside the PC. If you look at it, this card right there is a is a E1T1 card. It's a Chinese knockoff of a Digium card, like you can buy for asterisk. Costs about 130 bucks on eBay. And then that spits out one line out to here, and then that line gets split out into a bunch of different uh, lines, each one for each base station. Oh no way. Yeah. And so how many uh, subscribers can it handle at once? Well, each base station can handle up to seven concurrent calls at once and uh, a more or less unlimited number of subscribers. It's basically limited by the amount of traffic that they're, that they're sending. And so what was the load like here? The load was... Uh, I didn't really know what to predict. Um, we, we predicted that everybody would use, be using their phone heavily, and so we, we thought we'd need four base stations. Um, it was a little lighter than that, because not everyone used their phone and they didn't re use it super heavily, so we got away with two. What about the actual RF? Like, how do you how do you go about that? Oh, that's fun. So this right here is a. I can hold this. Thanks. This right here is a two watt uh, base station. It's got two transmitters. This is on loan from Jacob Applebaum. Um, that actually we didn't use because we we weren't able to make it happy. Um, but up on the tower over there, you can see there's there's two shrink wrap base stations, and that's what we used for the um, the actual network. And so th this isn't like uh, OpenBTS where you use, for example, a, uh, a USRP from Edis um, and kind of like hack together some stuff with Asterisk. This is the, the legit stuff that the telcos use. Yeah, this is actual telco gear. Um, we, we're using OpenBSC, which is, a, which is by some German guys. Um, 
What does OpenBSC stand for? It stands for Open Base Station Controller. And the Base Station Controller is the piece of hardware software mix that uh, talks to all the radios and makes sure that they're in sync and doing the right thing. And how do you go about getting the hardware for that? Uh, you just gotta know the right people, as it turns out. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not the sort of thing that you can find for sale on eBay very often. I mean, occasionally you can. But more often, it's 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 sort of a low demand, low supply sort of thing. Yeah, and so what uh, frequencies is this operating on? We're it's running a GSM. A, we're running GSM 1900 megahertz, which is U.S. high band. There's a there's a bunch of GSM frequencies. There's 850 and 1900 are used in the U.S. and uh, 900 and 1800 are used in Europe. And so uh, that's not like you know the ISM band or some of the free unlicensed spectrum. Nope. How do you go about? Uh, legally operating a telephone network on that spectrum. We got uh, permission from the FCC. It turns out that if you give them $60 and wait a month or two and you, you tell them what you're going to be doing and where, they're probably going to give you an experimental license if you ask nicely enough. That is so cool. Yeah. And, and what's the next step after that? I mean, are you able to you know, do something uh, more permanent? We'd like, to, we'd like to make this more, more easily deployable and, le and less crashy. Um, we'd also like to bring it to more conferences. Yeah? Yeah. So uh, what about, uh, you know, this seems to be like a thing that's like just now popping up. Uh, just a week ago at DEF CON, there was mm -hmm. uh, Shady Tell. No, that was Ninja Tell. Ninja Tell, We're sorry. Shady Tell. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hey, no, no. So I actually put the, um, the, the Shady Tell SIM and the Ninja Tell phone to see if they might fight. That worked? <laughs> yeah. Um, what about, uh, what kind of, um, what, what do you see next coming for like, you know, hacker phone service? Oh dear. Um, there, there's been some talk of setting up roaming between the two, between multiple conferences, so so you can take sims from one place and keep your number and go somewhere else. Um, there's there's some of that in in the German CCC network where you can keep the network keep the number across conferences or across years of of chaos camp. Um, but I'd like to set that up for all conferences and make sure that that is consistent. That would be really cool. Nice. What was the biggest challenge in setting this up? Oh dear. Um, Planning. Really? Yeah, planning and, and figuring out hardware. So it wasn't, it wasn't code, it wasn't... No, actually, I wrote, I wrote a bunch of code, but it wasn't finished in time. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what was the inspiration behind the, uh, the, the porta potty telephone booth? The, uh, uh, that's, that's an innovation of, of Chaos Camp as well. They call them data toilets. I'm data not super toilet. fond of the idea because our, ours kept overheating because I guess we did it wrong. Yeah, um, maybe you need some liquid cooling in the data toilet. Uh, no, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> I, I think that uh, if I if I were ha to have a choice, it would be really neat to have a, a, a telephone booth with rack mount ears in it. Oh, I love that. That is so wicked. Thank you so much, Duncan. It's, yeah, my pleasure. It's a real fantastic thing you guys are doing here. I hope to see this more and more um, at different camps. And so, you know, I'm sure that you did a bajillion, um, you know, uh, hours of research in oh, this. Yeah. And so maybe you could give some pointers to anybody else that's just wanting to kind of scratch the surface and, and start digging around in uh, building phone networks. Well, anything hmm. that, that uh, any resources that uh, popped up that, uh, that you found super useful? Resources that popped up. Um, no, I just, I just read a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you actually yeah. Like going through the actual like specifications. I, I, I printed out a bunch of the actual specs, about four inches worth. Um, and, and those are actually relatively easy to read, and they're, they're open access, which is nice. Um, CDMA is not open access. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so, so with GSM, it's actually pretty inviting to, oh, oh you want to be a phone company? You want to use GSM? Here's yeah, you want, to, you want to write it from scratch? Sure, go ahead and do all the work. I'm, I'm not completely sure if CDMA is not open access, but I, I seem to recall it being hard to get. So it's kind of like LDAP versus Active Directory. Yeah, that sounds about right. Cool. Yeah, GSM is, a, is an open European standard from 1989, and... It's, it's interesting stuff. Nice. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Dice.com is the career hub for tech, and for the last 20 years, they've been helping connect technology professionals with the highly targeted competitive jobs that they seek. Not only that, but they've got a sense of humor too. Because finding a job, yeah, that should still be fun. Take a look at this clip from the Dice.com Tech Job Mega Show to see what we mean. Safety first.
Pretty cool stuff, right? Well, be sure to check out the full two minute clip at youtube.com slash dice, and you can browse the dice huge database of job posting right now to find the perfect tech job for you. Go to dice.com today and see for yourself.